What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new video. Today, we're going to piggyback off of last week's episode, talking about becoming an owner operator and some of the struggles. But today, we're going to talk about truck repairs. And then for story time, we're going to talk about crawfish. <laughs> okay, so let's not waste any time. Let's get started. The point of last week's video was to say now's not the time to start because rates are low and truck prices are high. And the point of today's video is a little insight on repairs and some of the hidden costs of repairs. OK, so let me just give you an example. You don't get to choose where your truck breaks down. One time I broke my first breakdown was in Dallas. I was taking an exit. Boom. Had to get towed across town. I think that was $1,200. So that's your first expense. Then you give up the load that you're on or going get, right? Now you bring your truck, guess what happens? You drop your truck at the mechanic or I brought it to the Mac dealership. I don't know anybody in Dallas. Where am I gonna go? They're telling me it's gonna be a week before they can even look at the truck to diagnose it and write up an estimate. And then the big we gotta depends on parts they always say depend they can't give you a timeline because it depends on parts so what do you do i got an uber which is your next expense to a motel six which is my next expense to just figure it out i do a cost analysis if i stay in a motel for three weeks at whatever motel sixes are cheap right like fifty dollars a night and i was in the hood. I was in a, this Motel 6, it was sort of like a halfway house for me. It was like, just walk it. All right. We're not going to waste time with, it was bad, right? So you say, what would be the price to stay in a hotel for three weeks? What would be the price to get a last minute flight home to Las Vegas? But remember an Uber ride to the airport, that's going to be 45, 50 bucks. Fly home last minute, 300, $350. An Uber ride to my condo, then when the truck's ready, the same process in reverse. Or the third option would be to rent a car one way, drive it. When they call, rent a car one way, all last minute. So you spend all night trying to figure that out. But either way, all three options are really expensive. So you have to consider that, you know, when you break down, you just hung out. And then the next thing you have to keep in mind is you're not running loads while all of this is going on you've missed out on that revenue and you have the repair and your truck insurance is still due and your truck note is still due and whatever other expenses you have. All of that keeps rolling in while you're just sitting at home waiting on them to fix your truck. When you buy a used truck, it's like a coin toss. I was talking to, I had $40,000 in repairs in my first year as an owner operator. I was just talking to another driver who I work with. He had $20,000 in repairs in one year. And again, what's the lost revenue that he and I missed out on by not being able to run loads and just sitting at home? All of that stuff adds up. So if you're thinking about buying a truck, I'm not here to kill your dream, but you need to estimate if you go to buy a truck, the day you drive that truck off the lot, you should have a minimum of $15,000 in a bank account just set aside for repairs. I would say really 20 grand, 25 grand, because you still have to support yourself. But just keep that in mind that buying a used truck is a coin toss, right? Okay, so... I don't know, maybe next week we'll continue the series of don't become an owner operator. Why am I doing this? I'll tell you why I'm doing this because I've put out a couple of videos saying, hey, look, things are pretty good. But I've talked way more about how hard it is out there about my truck being broke. The problem is you have to watch my channel week after week after week to pick up. And most people don't watch all of my videos, which is fine. You don't have to. But I guess just get the feeling that people see that one video I put out where I was making a ton of money and I'm still getting comments on that. Like, and I, that video was so long ago, but nobody sees all the other videos about how bad it is, how hard it is, how many breakdowns I've had, how many weeks I've had of not 
making any money. So doing this last week and this week is sort of, it's my attempt for like a, a makeup. Like, please listen to me. That one video, I feel like taking it down because people, you know, they get the wrong idea. So I don't know. I guess I'm here to ask for forgiveness. I'm here to raise the dead. I'm here to play Jesus to the lepers in my head. Some people will know what that's from. I'm not, uh, whatever. It's you too. How come some people are good at putting words together? I'm not. How come some people are good at math? <laughs> and I'm not. Some people can write poetry like that. I can't. I can't do anything. Which ties into this video, right? If you're making important decisions based off of what I... I'm a bum, okay? And I don't say that just to be self-deprecating or like this faux humility that some people have. I mean, I'm a bum and I'm stupid. So if you're making decisions based off of what I say or uh, my YouTube videos, go listen to Bono. He's smart. <laughs> he wrote that. I didn't write that. <laughs> go listen to people who are good at math or people that have some talent or intel. I've got nothing. None of it. Okay? So good. I'm glad that YouTube song, when I said I've come to ask for forgiveness, it just popped in my head. All right, that's enough of the bad stuff. Time to offer a little levity here with story time. Some of you hate my stories and are leaving me right now. And if you're leaving me now, thank you for watching. I don't mind. Thank you for watching. I hope you watch the next video. I hope you got something out of this one. For those of you sticking around for story time, we're talking about crawfish. It's crawfish season, so it's not really a story, but we're going to show how to boil them and how to eat them or barrel them, where I'm from, some people say barrel instead of boil. <laughs> so we're gonna show how to barrel them and show how to eat them, okay? Let's do story time. Okay, this is the setup. We have a burner that normally runs on propane, but we got it hooked up to the natural gas of the house. We got the pot with the seasonings and the inner basket for when you're ready to dump them. There's not much in there because we're only boiling for two people, me and my dad. So we got potatoes, we got lemon, we got onion, and we got garlic and celery. Again, it's not much, but it's only for two people. Once the water's boiling, that's when you would add the sausage and the corn and anything else you might be adding. Some people will add other vegetables like a head of cauliflower. And this is what the crawfish look like. They're, I would call this medium size, they're not big. This is 23 pounds, which is way too much for two people. I would say 12 pounds for two people. If you eat a lot, 15 pounds for two people. But they had a sack with 23 pounds in it, so we said, give me that. What they're doing now, instead of purging them, which would be to soak them in salt water, we just soak them in fresh water and dump it out, and it's muddy. Then we fill it back up and dump it out and it's less muddy. Fill it back up and dump it out. Keep doing that until the water comes out clean and you got some clean crawfish. And what's the kind of sausage we use? Good old Brian Smoky Hollow. Now you might be saying, why that? <laughs> There's better sausage out there, that's true. But using other types of sausage, sometimes the skin will wrinkle when it gets in the ball and sometimes it'll be hard to chew actually something about the casing uh, the skin or the casing of brian sausage it's perfect for crawfish boils and let's be real once you take sausage out the boil how good does it have to be we're not we don't need gourmet anything speaking of don't eat gourmet see this corn you don't have to go to no farmer's market to, to it's frozen corn the cheap stuff out the freezer case in the grocery store. That's all you need. Because anything that goes in that pot, once it comes out, it tastes like crawfish boil, right? The water's boiling, now it's time to add the crawfish. I'm gonna cut in right here. I'm not gonna show the crawfish going in the pot because it's, some people could be sensitive. Yes, the crawfish are live and they're going in a barreling pot. So I'm not gonna show that on YouTube. A lot of people are offended by my videos already 
I think for people out there with really delicate sensibilities, um, like if my stories offend you, I don't know if me putting live crawfish in a Berlin pot might send you over the edge. So let's just go. The crawfish are already in a pot. Okay, crawfish are in a pot and so goes the corn. Corn lasts because it needs the least amount of time to cook. So once all of that goes in, the water stops boiling and now we're just waiting for it to come to a second boil. Here we go, crawfish are boiling, you see what it is? And it's time to cut the fire off, so let's do that. Okay, fire's off, it's much more quiet as you can tell. By the way, using natural gas seems to be quieter than using a propane burner. So now is the phase of letting them soak. This is where the crawfish really soak up the juice and what I'm gonna do is try to cool off the pot. To spray it down. Some people will add ice into the pot. Some people would put cold water into the pot. At this point, the crawfish have soaked like 15 minutes or so. And this is what they look like. All right, y'all, it's crawfish time for my non-Louisiana viewers. First of all, the attire. You don't want to wear a long sleeve shirt because the juice is going to run all the way down your forearm to your elbow. So wear an old t-shirt. And I say old because it's going to splash. You're going to get juice everywhere it's best to wear old clothes then you need lots of paper towels because your eyes are going to water your nose is going to run you're going to have juice running down your chin and your arms so tons of paper towels now check out the technique don't look at me look at my hands you grab the head in one hand the tail in the other twist and pull boom see how easy it popped out that's all there is to it then you suck the head and you eat the meat now when i say suck the head what am I sucking? <laughs> well, there's juice in there. The juice is really the water from the boil with the seasoning. The seasoning is called crab boil. Whether you're boiling crabs, crawfish, or shrimp, the seasoning is called crab boil. And you see the fat in the back of the head? You mix that with the juice from the boil, and it's just so good. Now, see, there's the fat right there, all that yellow stuff on the tail. If you could separate the head from the tail perfectly, all the fat will stay right there on the tail. Look, you see that? Oh, it's so good. And uh, then you just put it between your teeth and use your thumb to pinch the back of the tail so the meat comes out. Now, some people will peel every knuckle off. You see the picture I got inlaid? I don't have time to peel every single piece of that shell off. Look, just put it between your teeth and then use your thumb to pinch the back of the tail. We call it pinching tails and sucking heads, right? Suck the head, pinch it. Look at it's not coming out of my nose because it's, it's so spicy, but it's so good. And for those of you wondering about the garlic, it comes out super soft. You see that? You can just take a butter knife and spread it on bread or eat it just like that. And that's the video for today. I hope you enjoyed the message. I hope you enjoyed the crawfish part. I hope you watch the next one. And until the next one, this is Jason signing out.